I'm Keith Jones, and you're watching Nasty Knuckles. You're listening to Nasty Knuckles, the Hockey Outlaws podcast, with your host, Terry Nasty Sotomayor and former Philadelphia Flyer Enforcer Riley Cote as they go behind the scenes with your favorite NHL players. Time to face off. All right, welcome back. What's happening, Nasty? What's up, Rigorelli? Yeah, I know what's happening. You just coming off a fucking hat trick. Everybody knows. <laughs> Oh yeah, <laughs> check the live barn. <laughs> Just check a couple it out. apples there too, Nasty. Oh yeah, get about those. You had five points. Uh, at least. Who's counting? Yeah, I know, not me. I had two. Yeah, helpers. <laughs> you could have had at least I three snipes. I didn't have a shot on that. Well, you, you could have shot. You, I'm you need to flex into that. Dude, when, I, when you got a guy like Zingo and and Foxy, the Fox Trot, you got to dash because those You're guys right. could bury. You're right. So you're right. Your eyes are always up. I tell you always what, up on a swivel. I love playing with those guys because they make me look like I don't suck. Yeah. Because all you gotta do is take a pass, give it right back. They yeah. made some good plays. Oh, well, let's not get carried away. Maybe one or two. You're looking good. Oh, good style. Felt it. The pins were moving, weren't they? They were. They were moving. I was Definitely moving good. more than I've seen before. But so. I, I, I gotta say, I'm, I'm gonna give Tovey some credit for your, uh, your G's because you sniped them. I you did. may not have with the green gob. <laughs> You're probably right. I don't know. I feel if, like I could have had at least 10 Gs. If you had Toby back in the day, you oh, would have had to easily. But, you, you know, you were, you were dropping the mitts and the stick on the ice. Yeah, well, I wasn't concerned about scoring goals. But, <laughs> but even the other night, I mean, I had a, a ton of shots. Yeah, you Some did. Decent, decent scoring opportunities. I was going to tell you, stop killing the logo on their goal. Oh, yeah. Well, that's yeah. hit them in the stomach. That's not the stick. Times. That's just some straight up skill. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> Lack of. <laughs> Lack thereof. No, you were, you were flying, though. You were buzzing. You were in flow like state now. Yeah, I, I know. I know you were. You, you look like it. And uh, it, was a, it was a good time. Came up. We're 1 0. Good start to the season. Yep. Good start. And yep. I got my new Toby stick. Yeah, I know. What the hell's so, mine? Hey, you better call the boys and ask them. Richard, Toby, Aaron. You slashed someone and broke yours. Yeah, they weren't overly happy with the way it broke. <laughs> no, it, it wasn't shooting, so they were the like, best uh, is how they were like, oh, my God, I broke? How'd it break? No, yeah. don't worry. He just slashed the guy. <laughs> it was a slash a slash cross check. Yeah. It was okay. a little bit of both. It was. It wasn't letting him get by. No. You know I well, played you were pissed off. You were pissed off. Yeah, well, You don't usually get mad, but anyway. It happens. Yeah. So uh, in Flyers land, we got the rookie camp starting today. Yeah. Yeah, it's about time. I think it's a long time I know, coming. Oh, I know. A lot of excitement. Yep. A lot of work. Yeah, a lot, a lot of hard work of, coming hard for work. these guys, uh, which I know they're they're aware of. But they they turn around and uh, play this weekend two games. Yeah, up in Lehigh, Lehigh right? Valley. Yeah, that'll be fun. Um, Friday and Saturday. Um, I think Baller and Debo are going to give you the call on those games. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Debo, you might be sleeping, but. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's it's uh, it's uh, really exciting that they're we're getting going now. Yeah, it's that time, you know yeah. that, that that feeling around when hockey season starts, training camp, right? I mean, there's a lot of excitement leading up, but then once you week actually get going, yeah, um, week away from main camp. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, next Thursday. So, uh, lots of good energy around. Well. The city, yeah, obviously around the, the rink and um, and around obviously around uh, the, the world for for hockey fans because yeah. there's something that you really can't compare hockey season to, right? Just that feeling and that that seasonal energy yes. that uh, can't 100%. be replaced, uh, at least in the hockey world. So. I mean, I think all around the America, they were pretty excited about Natty Ice starting the season up, you know, <laughs> yeah, right. in Hollydale. So. Well, of course. Yeah, right. you know, lot, people were pretty fired runway. up about yeah. that. Yeah, a couple people in the stands there. <laughs> hey, there was more than two, I think, the, the other night. The best is everyone's up in the bar, right? Just oh, yeah. drinking Eating Carbonus, drinking, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> what are these assholes doing yeah. out here? And my dad up there with his 44 sucks sign that he usually Get holds up. Get your feet up. moving. Yeah. Come on, yeah. Nass, tells move me everything your feet. I'm doing wrong. So... Anyway, um, yeah, it is exciting time. So looking forward to everything getting wound up here. Yeah, no doubt. And then um, Nate Thompson. Yes, our buddy Nate Thompson signs a PTO in LA. So good luck, good, brother. Yeah, good for him. Great. I uh, hope uh, it all works out there. Character, dude. Yes. 
unbelievable human outside of uh, outside of the game and just wish him the best. Yeah. I know that's uh, somewhat of his neck of the woods, yeah. his family and everything like that. So it would be, be cool amazing if, if it could work out. Yeah, that would be really cool. Bring uh, that veteran presence to the team. So Just a great guy, too, in your locker room and does everything you want. Absolutely. And, uh, Nas, you got some news, don't you? <laughs> yeah, I am uh, the new head equipment manager for the Philadelphia Rebels in the North American Hockey League. Congrats, man. Thank you, man. It's awesome. Back it's in the mix. Back in the mix, man. Out of retirement, I guess you could say I uh, – uh, the boys uh, started their season last night in uh, Minnesota. They're there for f- uh, five days. Play. Uh, it's a long trip. Yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. The game. So, uh, well, pretty excited about it, man. It's been fun last week uh, getting to know the guys and uh, getting everything set up. Uh, the coach, GM, uh, Justin Hale, great guy. Just met him a, uh, about a month ago, and uh, Maddie Gaudreau from the area, Johnny. Johnny Gaudreau's brother, um, he played a little bit pro and everything, and um, he's assistant coach, and he's awesome with these guys, and it's it's been a lot of fun. So look, really looking forward to this. Yeah, man, I'm happy for you. Thank you. And your hair looks great. Well, I mean, <laughs> I do need a haircut though. It's, I gotta, well, listen, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be an equipment guy with my man bun, no. so I had to cut her. He can't yeah, have that. I can't do that. Get her the frosty tips now. Yeah, I don't they, have they, frosty <laughs> tips. I haven't had them in a long time. Frosty tips. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look good, man. I'm excited for you. you get get you back around the rink there and yeah. do what you do best excited. and just, uh, you know, keeping keeping the, lo- the room loose and yep. obviously keeping those, those those blades nice and sharp. Yeah, you got to do it. You got to get some Tobys in there too, I think. Well, it, Are they, the, uh, the league is sponsored by a company, uh, so that's the bad thing because I, I, uh, I did have one of mine in there the other day. A couple of uh, kids yeah. were looking at it. They're like, whoa, wow, you know, but I'm like, eh, too bad. But, <laughs> you know, you never know. Maybe next season. Yeah, next you know, year. Maybe, Toby pay maybe, their dues. Yeah, and yeah. Get the twigs Just in there. Just pay the North American League and... Then you got guys using it. That's exactly it, right? That's one way to do it. Yep, that's right. All right, Nash, I think we're ready to rock. Keith Jones? Keith Jones, episode 86. Let's go. Let's do it. Welcome back. I'm Riley Cote. And I'm Derek Settlemeyer. And this week, we are so happy to have our second Western Michigan alumni in a row, actually. Oh, yeah. The legend. Keith Jones. What's up, brother? Who'd you have before me? Wade Alice? Yes. Oh, yeah. Wade He's Alice? a good kid, isn't yes, he? Yes, he is. He's awesome. I like him. I like yeah. him. we got to keep him healthy. To- That's yeah. right. That's exactly we what talked we talked about. That. about. Yeah. He's got a lot of potential, man. He's a, and he's a good kid. He loves the game. Yes, like, he, he does. He just exudes that. And I, I, I love to see the enthusiasm he has to play. So 100%. hopefully he has a big year. Yeah, I hope so. He, he's, a, he's a great kid, like you said. I caught the tell while well, his first couple – development camps i was still with the team and i was telling the story like usually those kids are pretty quiet you know they're coming in they don't know a lot of guys and if they know someone they're just kind of sitting with them and i could hear him down the hall i come in the room and he's like yeah i'm like all right man we got someone with you know a little personality and and all that but he's a great kid yeah we had him on last week so yeah flyer fans would definitely love him he's he, he he said, he "Yeah, pours it all out, out there, and it, it might be a Western Michigan thing." Is I, I, yeah, I, yeah, right. I, I yeah. remember my first training camp in Washington. I just showed up, and I just, I think it was number. What was my number? Like in the forties, right? So you're not supposed to make the team. So <laughs> right. I'm like, it didn't even affect me. I just went right in there, and Chief wasn't there yet. But Ruby hadn't arrived. He came in a year after that, but. All the guys are getting the veterans are getting on the massage table. I just hop right on. <laughs> they're like hey, looking at me like, "What's what's going on here?" You know, and I just I, I got to get on here, man. Yeah, right. I'm Back stiff story, and yeah. I got to play. <laughs> and I just remember like guys like Pavanka and those guys looking at me like, "What's this guy doing?" Like, who is this guy? It worked. I mean, you get in there and just pretend you belong, and sometimes yep. you end up staying. So yeah, yeah right. Who knows? That's awesome. Worked out well. Um, Jonesy, uh, what's your summer like? What would you have going on this summer? You know, in uh, last January, uh, my wife and I sold the farm in uh, Shimong, so because uh, our daughter's not coming back to ride anymore. So she's down in Ocala and has been, you know, for the last few years doing the, the equestrian thing. Cool. My wife used to do it, so she used to be in Florida every winter. Um, so we... Uh, Decided, you know, we don't we don't really need the farm anymore. So we sold it, and uh, we got a place down in Florida temporarily. 
and we're just kind of figuring things out while we wait for this housing market to cool down yeah, a little right. bit. But yeah, no I think we got out at the right time. Now we just got to see when we get back in, you know. Well, Briz's house is out. Yeah. 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 You can afford oh, that yeah. thing. Yeah, I heard you guys had old yeah. Briz going here. <laughs> yeah, old Briz was on here telling us. <laughs> you some, made some news with that. <laughs> that's great. Uh, yeah. Um, that's cool. I didn't realize you had, obviously, I don't see as much as yeah. I'd like to, but I didn't realize you guys had sold Yeah, that. so I, I come back and forth, and I got a place to stay when I'm here, and then when nice. I'm not, I head back down to Florida, and you know, so far so good. Yeah, is that going to be headquarters full time? Yeah, for now. Yeah. I mean, we're gonna we're just kind of feeling things out, seeing what what all is going to happen. You know, we had NBC for so long doing mm -hmm. you know the, NBC, the national stuff, and then it switched to you know the two different networks, ESPN and TNT. And you know, fortunately for me, I ended up with TNT, so it's a little bit different. I'm not in the studio all the time, so. It was convenient to be here, go up to Connecticut, come back, do the flyer stuff. Now it's, you know, kind of convenient to do it from anywhere. So mm -hmm. that's kind of yeah. the genesis of what was behind all that. I, I love the TNT uh, broadcast. It, I, I think it, it's great. I'll tell you, it's it's just been a great experience. Uh, good people behind the scenes. They let uh, they let these guys like the the studio show is incredible. Oh yeah, and, you know with Biz there and talk and anytime Gret Wayne Gretzky talks, I want to hear it. Yeah, hundred you know, percent. Like it's really 100%. interesting. It's, and he's got so many stories that. You know, he's shared amongst friends, but he shares them amongst the people watching, and that's that's a really cool thing. I think, I think they've uh, done an incredible job with that. And the games, they just let us do the game. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's like just do the game. People want what I found anyway. As a, and we were all fans as well before we became players, Riley. It's mm -hmm. like you know what you liked sure. watching and why you watched, whether it was Hockey Night in Canada growing up or ESPN back in the day. You wanted to enjoy the game. You, your announcer should never take away from the game. Right. They should enhance it. And, exactly. And that's kind of the attitude that they have, and it kind of fits the way I think a game should be done. So it's worked out pretty well. For sure. Do you like it between the benches there? I do. Yeah, yeah I do. I it's a lot of fun because, you know, it's different than it was when I played. You know, I was a very talkative guy on the bench no. and trying to stir things up, you know, <laughs> trying to get under the skin of the opposition and get a few fights for the tough guys around me. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, those were always fun moments, but it's different down there now. It's not, uh, it's not quite as uh, vocal and for good reason. There's microphones everywhere, right. you know, yeah, sometimes you careful. things are said that, you know, taken in the wrong context, get people upset. So it's sure. like, it's just a different uh, atmosphere down there, but there's so much going on and watching the bench. I have a greater respect for coaches now than I really ever had because when I played, you know, I had a, you'd have problems with a certain coach. Or, you know, you think he didn't know what he was doing. Um, obviously, they do. But the way they operate a bench during a game is uh, interesting to, to look at down there, to watch what they're paying attention to. So many angles, you can't really see stuff. You know, like yeah. when a coach is interviewed after the game and he says, well, you know, someone asked him about a hit and he's, well, I didn't really see it. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, you right. Know, for in sure. a lot of cases, they haven't had a chance to to see what's happening. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're you know doing, uh, getting a new line ready to go on the ice right. or organizing that. They're talking to someone that might have made a mistake on the previous play. Sure. Uh, now it's iPads all the time oh, too, they, and the players, the players are watching themselves like. I might have quit hockey if I had to go, I was if I had say, to, go to the bench and watch my last shift. Oh, I my God. Been, I would have been like, ah. <laughs> Make I my next shift enough. worse. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's different now. So it's it's good to kind of get that perspective. No, that's interesting. Yeah, you do a great job at it. I mean, we, <clears throat> we were talking earlier, like, not to just pump your tires, but you're you're really good in studio and, and you're really good in between the benches. And, you know, like, you just kind of talk too. You're like, so everyone understands, you know, what's going on. I always like your stories too. When you, when you're able sure. to throw them in, but it, uh, you do a great job at it, man. So, um, with you talking about uh, being in Florida, like, so what do you, you'll come here for like yeah. it's a homestand? Yeah, okay. for sure. And then, you know, I spent a lot of time on the road because yeah. I'm now with TNT, I'm on the road, um, with the flyers are on the road half of the season. So it's, uh, it's kind of interesting to kind of jump around. I'm used to being in a hotel the entire, and then when the playoffs arrive, it's TNT pretty much at least every other night, but a lot of times every night wow. during yeah. a series. So it's, um, it works. Yeah, yeah, it works. Yeah. And talk about how you transitioned into TV. Yeah, it's, uh, it's interesting. I, when I was in college at Western Michigan, I jumped from major to major just trying to stay eligible. Like, I was not a student. <laughs> And my dad was an educator. He was a superintendent of education. He was all over me all the time. And I, I did not like school. Somehow I was 
at Western Michigan because I was drafted, you know, by the Capitals. There was I wasn't ready to play in the NHL when I was drafted. I still, you know, I hadn't even been to a gym in my life, so <laughs> I, I had a lot of work to do. I was a raw talent, so you know, getting to Western and then trying to survive academically at the same time as playing hockey was not always an easy thing. So at one point I became, first I started in uh, physical education. I thought we might just run around the gym. You know? <laughs> it didn't happen like that. All of a sudden I'm in health class. I'm looking at all that. No, that's not for me. So I, I switched to uh, uh, communications. And the, the whole class went on this like field trip to a local, like an ABC affiliate to do, we're going to do a, a mock news uh, broadcast. So, you know, we've been studying in class and a whole class is lined up. Everybody's going to get their opportunity. Well, I got to the front of the line after watching about eight or 10 people and I kind of turned around like you would do in a drill in hockey yeah. when you did yeah, that. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I go back to the back of the bus. So I kind of turned around. I walked back to the back and I kept walking. I was like, I, I just had this, I never liked talking in front of people. And I, even in front of a classroom trying to make a speech or something, it always was a major fear of mine. So that was my really the last experience I had had, you know, with any type of, you know, you're interviewed during hockey games and that was always something I had no problem with. But, you know, getting up there and being with a camera on right. was a lot different. Mm-hmm. So when I retired, because I was a good interview people thought this would be a natural thing for me well it wasn't and it was tough and i remember like sweating through my suit you know i've got ill-fitting suits on i gained (laughs) about 30 pounds right after i retired kept eating the way i was when i was playing right stopped exercise and thought this was the way life was going to be and uh, i just remember leaving espn because that's where i got my first chance on nhl tonight with john bucci grass mm. and i'm going i looked at john i go I'm, I'm terrible man and i was always one of those kind of guys that ripped on the guys that that were doing tv like with the boys you yeah, know yeah. Sarah, like that idiot what's he know <laughs> and, and i was that idiot like yeah, I, right. I became that guy that not only wasn't making sense with what i was saying it was showing that i was like really uncomfortable doing it so Luckily, I came back and started doing the uh, the Flyers post game shows, kind of in chairs like this with uh, with Coatsy. Uh, Al Meltzer was doing it back in the day. Uh, Eddie Hospitar was doing it when I started, and uh, it was a real casual atmosphere. And eventually, I got more comfortable, you know, having an IFB like a thing in your ear where you know the producer is telling you what's coming next, and mm-hmm. and as you're talking, you know, those can be That's really. It's gotta be hard. It's a different. Man. It's different. It, it is. And some guys are natural at it. I've seen guys come in that just left the ice or are still playing, and they're like unbelievable. I go, wow, this guy's gonna be a star, you know. So I just um, I just kept working, and fortunately for me, being here in Philadelphia, they had just started. You know, uh, Sportsnet back in the, in that day, and I was able to evolve, get better at it, get reps in, keep doing it, and got over kind of that intimidation of being on there and the feeling that you're embarrassing yourself, and it's a it's never a great feeling. So it was good <laughs> to get rid of that, and then some of the national stuff started to happen after spending five or six years doing, you know, the stuff in Philly, but then doing morning radio kind of was a turning point for me when uh, I went to WIP as a guest with Al Morganti, brought me in, and uh, I told a couple of uh, jokes that were told in a way that they didn't seem like they were jokes, but they came across really well. And back in the day when you could say a little more, yeah, yeah, never right. be able to do it today. Um, but that was kind of how I got my foot in the door and then just kept going, and it evolved into a job there first, and then everything else fell into place. Wow. Yeah, it was it's a it's an interesting path and you know, I was proud to play in the NHL obviously, but to survive after has mm. been a really, you know, when I look back on things sometimes I go, man, I got lucky that this happened and that happened and I guess my my advice would be be available, like yeah. be around. Yeah. And then uh, when you get those opportunities, you know, do the best that you can to try to survive. And yeah, so no far doubt. that that kind of yeah. attitude has worked. Yeah, you do a hell of a job. Yeah. So. More than survive, I mean, yeah, driving. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'd put you up there. You know, again, not pumping tires here, but like, I mean, you, you simplify the game and you communicate well. So, I mean, yeah. obviously, putting a ton of reps. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's nice that's to a see. big part of it. And it's just I watch hockey as a, as when I was playing. Craig Berube, myself, Dale Hunter used to get together all the time in Washington, and these they were hockey 
not just players, but fans. Mm -hmm. And we would watch the games. It'd be watching Buffalo play, and it would be May and Ray and Barnaby and yeah. Bo Bo the Boogeyman would be yeah, running right. around, right? And I'd be telling Baruby, I'd say, these guys are going to, you know, they're going to kick your ass, right? And then he'd be <laughs> just like, of course, next night he's dropping the gloves with all three, you know. Like, uh, right, just, yeah, but right. that's what we did. And then Huntsy would be needling them. Yeah. And, you know, we just, we just had a great time watching. But so many of the things that – I would use to needle guys came from watching games. It wasn't necessarily personal stuff. It'd be something you see a guy make a selfish play, take a bad penalty, the other team scores, just stuff that uh, by doing your homework and right. paying attention to the league, you'd be able to kind of use as some of the ammunition that you needed just to get the guy at the right time <laughs> in front of the bench yeah, you know, right. when the music stops. Yeah, it's all <laughs> timely, you know, right? Moment. Of course, oh, yeah. yeah no, the moment. Tough guy. Yeah. Like, I had uh, some tough guys that, didn't appreciate it that much. Uh, when I kind of say something, well, he's lined up with the guy, the tough guy in the opposition. Puck's getting ready to drop right in front of the bench, and I kind of say something. That, so those two guys end up engaging. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Uh, but Ruby loved it. I've never, yeah. I never saw anything like it. Like he just, he's, he just starts slobbering like the like <laughs> dog looking at a bone, you know. <laughs> yeah. And he'd come back and thank me like every day. Hey, thanks for that. I needed that fight. Thanks for you know. Like it was just wow. amazing to me. That's amazing. And that's really how we you know became good friends, not just on the ice but off the ice too. It was it's incredible to this day I still can't believe the stuff that that guy did in order to stay in the league and the way he made everybody on his own team you know feel that much more secure like it's he, he's one of the best ever there's no doubt and yeah. I know you guys love him too but he I'm so happy when he won the Stanley Cup oh my I god like I won it like it's yeah, like, I know yeah. it's never happened way. to me before where I was really you know if you don't win it as a player, which I did not, you know, there's something that's bugging you all the time. And mm -hmm. it's really difficult to even, you know, watch the lifting of the cup because, you yeah. know, it wasn't you. So uh, for him to do it, it felt uh, felt like a really big deal. Yeah. So, and yeah, it was. It sure did. I agree with that. Were you always a, a little bit of a prick on the ice? I mean, looking at your, your PIMS in uh, maybe even your second college. last year in college. Yeah, yeah in you, college, were, you were grinding. Yeah. No, I, in college <laughs> you had the full mask, right? Right. So I've always been a guy that had my elbows up. Okay. Because um, I, I played as a smaller guy. I didn't grow until probably 17, 18. Like, I was a real late bloomer. I was one of those kids, like, it was getting awkward because you're getting in the locker room. One guy's got a full beard. Yeah, right. And I'm looking, oh, I'd like to go. <laughs> Waiting for you your armpit hair to grow. to show up here, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, I was quick, dude. I'll swear. Like, it's like, that's, uh, uh, that stuff wasn't happening for me. So I just kept playing, luckily. And the guys on my team are good guys because, you know, you can get your – you get your balls busted, you know. It's like, yeah. and I'm like, okay, all right, all right. And then finally hit this growth spurt and and uh, suddenly became a better player. I was a very good player when I was young. I was the, the best on my teams, you know, from the start of organized hockey. And then right around, you know, the age of puberty, when the guys started to grow, I never, I didn't grow. Mm -hmm. So I kept dropping back, like dropping back. I was playing AAA hockey the whole way, one of the top players. I actually went to hub hockey and uh, minor midget and played a level down double A hockey in Canada and uh, then started to come back the other way. You know, started to love the game again because I went from being a top guy to starting to hang on to stay on the team. Mm -hmm. And then I became a top guy at, at a, a level down below and started to, you know, slowly start this climb that eventually led to uh, making remarkably making it to the NHL. That's awesome. Well, and then when you when you you know you played a few games in the American League to start your pro career, did you, did you know then you had to like really bring this element of? It's funny. It's you know from call. I I I'd never had a fight in my life till I fought in my first NHL training camp. I never fought anybody. Okay. I didn't have a fight in school. I, I wow. always had a buddy who would fight for him. Like, it's amazing when I, I'm so lucky. Like, I just had, <laughs> for some reason, the tough guys liked hanging out with me. I guess I made them laugh. So humor is a great thing if mm -hmm. you can, if it's timely and just, it's not uh, not directed at the wrong person. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, so, right. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> That's you learn the truth. some valuable lessons, right? <laughs> so I'd never had a fight. And uh, so when I was in the minors, I played six games after my college season ended. And I didn't have my. I probably had like two penalty minutes. I wasn't fighting. I, I was producing. I was, you know, picking up like a point a game in Baltimore, and <clears throat> kind of getting my feet wet. But I wasn't interested in stirring it up too much because I wasn't really comfortable yeah. with it. So, got to Washington the next year, and training camp started, and then the preseason started, and I started fighting. And I'd never had a fight before. Uh, I, th I think I fought Steve Leach. 
that used to be with the Bruins. And t- he was tough, but I hung in there and it went okay. Like I could have got killed, but I didn't. And I'm like, oh, this is all right. But I really never got hit. You know, and I was like, we, he threw a couple punches, I threw a couple. And that was the first ever fight that I had had in my life. And so afterwards, I remember a, a little while after that, Dale Hunter and I, he kind of mentored me, kind of took me to his house for dinner, like some of the veteran players will, <clears throat> with him and his family. And um, he said, Jonesy said, you know, if you want to, if you want to play, there's, you got to do more. Like you can't, you have to separate yourself from everybody else. You know, and I'm like, what? okay, what do you, I thought I was, <laughs> I thought I was doing okay. Like I thought I, I thought I had a chance to, you know, make the team. And he said, you see this kitchen table here? If this is you at your house, just picture that. He said, if, if you had $500,000 sitting on this table and somebody walked in, opened your front door, walked in, grabbed the $500,000 and walked out. He said, what are you going to do? Well, I said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump him. He says, yeah, you're going to fight him, right? You're going to fight him for that money. And I go, yeah, of course. He goes, well, do it on the ice. <laughs> and I was like, right. oh, shit, perspective. Okay. So it was, like a, it was a great message because our team at that point didn't have, you know, all the tough. We had a tough team, but we didn't have guys. The Barubi hadn't arrived yet. So there was a chance to make the team if I did something different than mm. the other guys that were the same as me trying to make the team. So even though I was not good at it, um, I didn't mind it, and I started doing it. So my first year, I think I, I might have had seven fights. So, but it was balanced amongst being a, a pest, playing with Dale Hunter and Pat Elenick my for mu- much of my first year um, on the third line in Washington. And we kind of, Huntsy had like a three-second rule, like if – the whistle blows. There's a scrum. If you're not there in three seconds, don't bother coming over. You know, like it's it was a group mentality of survival, and and Dale obviously had a great career of doing yeah. that. So, I I owe a lot to to him and the way things played played out for me. And remarkably, his brother Mark was injured, and that's what gave me the chance to get called up to the NHL because. After that training camp, I was sent down. I played, I think, eight games in the minors to start the year, and I kept, I kept telling Barry Trotz, who was the coach, "I'm ready, I'm ready." You know, tell those guys, "I'm ready. I want to go up." And he's like, "This guy just got." Me. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready. I'm ready. Games, and then yeah. they called Connor Wal- Steve Connor Walchuk up, and I'm like, "I'm ready." Before him, no arguing with the guy all the yeah. time. I just always did this. I kept fighting because half of me didn't believe I was ever going to make it, but I wanted to play one game. I knew I was that close. And I just wanted to make it, you know, to say I made it to the NHL. So I kept pushing for that first game. And, uh, you know, luckily got called up. And it's kind of, it, it, it's funny when I when I think back to being called up, this is how much of a, this is how badly I wanted it. So I, I room with two guys in the minors and Baltimore and, and Washington were similar to the Phantoms and the Flyers for a while where they're in the same, basically same practice rink. So you're right across the hallway from the guys that are there. And I'm in Baltimore playing with a guy named Rob Leask and Trevor Halverson. He was a, Halverson was a first round pick younger than I was for the Caps. And Leask was a defenseman. We're roommates and I got the, I got the loft upstairs. So I had one of those old uh, yellow Walkmans, you know, the big oh, old yeah, Walkmans. Oh yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to act like, you know, that I'm desperately wanting to get up to the NHL. You know, you're, you're comfortable where you are, but um, I'm listening to a, Capitals Canucks game on the on the Walkman, knowing that there's like four injuries in the Capitals lineup at this time. Anybody else goes down, or if they lose again, there's a chance that I'm gonna I could get called up because I knew Connor Walchuk had just got called up, right? So I'm listening to the game. They're in Vancouver. Kevin Miller, who had been traded for Dino Cicerelli, Cicerelli went to Detroit. Kevin Miller had come in. He took like a five-minute major and was really struggling. The fans were upset because it wasn't Cicerelli. <laughs> so I heard him go to the penalty box. I'm like, oh, that's, that's all right, you know. So, And then I heard Mark Hunter injured. He left the game. So I'm like, okay. So I'm still listening to my Walkman, listening to the game about midway through the second period. I'm on Eastern time. They're out, they're out in Vancouver. And uh, the one of my roommates, Rob Lease, comes up and he hits me because I had my Walkman on. I didn't hear the phone. Yeah. So he goes, hey, it's David Poyle for you, right? And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Here oh, we yeah. go. So I picked up the phone. David's like, hey, you got a 6 a.m. flight to Calgary tomorrow. Uh, not sure if you're playing, but you're getting called up. You're leaving from BWI, Baltimore. 
airport tomorrow morning. I'm like, yes. You know, I didn't sleep the whole time. So I guess about four hours later, because of the time change, I'm at the airport. I'm there, and I'm going, this is great. I look over. There's Connor Walchuk. He's, <laughs> he's on the same flight. No. Right? Oh, yeah, we're both going. Oh. And I'm going... He had played one game at the end of the year, year before, and I'm like, man. And I, we've both been told, not sure if you're playing, right? So we fly all the way there, you know, and we do the morning skate. Terry Murray's coaching in Washington at that time, and he comes up after, not sure if you guys are playing tonight. Go get a nap and get a hug. Like, How are you nope. going to sleep like that? Yeah, yeah right, every yeah. game. So I did I come back to the rink, and sure enough, was told uh, – you're playing, this will be oh, your game. Awesome. Now, Baruby was on the other side at that time. He was oh, playing for Calgary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, another guy, Bird Dog, uh, Greg Smith, who sure. ended, he no, passed well, away, yeah. mm-hmm. unfortunately. Um, he was wearing, wasn't wearing a helmet because the, the league in 92 came out with a rule where you could elect not to wear a helmet if you wanted to. You had to sign a waiver, and you could actually – Go back on the old rule and take your helmet off. Hmm. So this guy did, I didn't know and that. I didn't. Know, yeah, I it no happened. Idea. It happened. So, but I didn't really know the rule because I had just got there, and I'm like, "How old is this guy?" <laughs> he keeps hitting me on fight. Gary Roberts was on the team. Theo Fleury broke my tooth in half my first shift oh, on no elbow. Shit. Yeah, it was like this is amazing, <laughs> and uh, so that's when I I got the chance to play my first game. But that's. When I look back on listening to that Walkman, I was just begging. I kept saying, I got to go. I, I need to get up there. Cause, and I was 23 years old because I had just left college. Right. So in retrospect, it was smart on my part. Um, I was producing in the minors. But getting back to it, I, I barely did anything in the minors physically as far as fighting or that. I just collected points. And for some reason, I thought I was, you know, above that and I was going to make it to the NHL luckily it worked out in my favor and I did all those other things when I was in the NHL yeah well that's awesome did, now when Murph came to you did he have those black shoes on those you know what? I, uh, that's a great question that's a great question we had many fights Terry Murray and I okay because oh, yeah. yeah. okay. I, I, I I I fought for things like um and I think he, I know Terry would laugh about it now because I got to know him when he was in a different way when he was assistant with the Flyers right. and I was doing the TV. So, but uh, we had we had many battles, a lot of, a lot of fights, and one of them in particular. It's uh, it's also amazing to me when I think back to it. We were in uh, Anaheim, and it was about twelve games into my second season in the league. Okay, I was making like 150 grand. I thought I was rich. Like I, yeah. I thought that uh, I, I, I had no idea, you know, how wealthy people really are. And I thought this is it. I've got money. I can do whatever. <laughs> and I was just like, so anyway, I, um, I had played the first three games, scored a goal in my third game, got sat out the next game. So I'm a, that you know, when, as a player, you produce, you think you're doing things right, you should keep playing. Now, I, I probably wasn't doing things I should be. So I sat out, played next three games, scored in the third one, got sat out again. Now we played three more. I score in Vancouver. So we're going to Anaheim. We fly to Anaheim. We all go to dinner at the White House restaurant in Anaheim, the whole team. And uh, Randy Burridge is on the team. He's a, he's a great the great needler like he's on right? he's going terry murray's got your jersey on his wife tonight and you're getting it you're coming out of the lineup he's telling me at dinner and i'm like no i'm not and i'm pissed about it like i'm like this this guy's like i want i was really getting mad at, at stumpy so all the other guys were piling on and sure enough i go to the rink the next day we're doing the morning skate and um you know you get that conversation with the coach near the end of practice or oh, yeah. the morning skate where he comes over and goes hey uh, yeah hey jonesy you're not playing tonight get a skate in i hate it oh. i hated that skate <laughs> like no nobody wants to be the guy that's not playing right because you get buried physically yeah and uh i'm now but i'm also really upset because this you know randy burge in front of all the guys on the team's giving it to me so bad so i said uh as loud as can be at the rink there in anaheim you know, F you, like it's uh, right as loud as can be. The whole, everyone stops. <laughs> Everybody stops. Second year player making 150 <laughs> grand a year. And I just told the coach in no uncertain terms, <laughs> yeah. everybody heard it. And he said, Terry goes, what, what did you say? And I said it again. And he goes, what's wrong with you? You know? And, and so we get in this 
argument on the ice. Everybody leaves. The entire Capitals team, uh, that would be the 93 team, leaves. Rod Langway's last road trip ever was on this oh, trip. Wow. <laughs> yeah. he le- they all leave. So Terry and I stay on the ice, and we're going back and forth about it. And I'm, and I'm telling him, like, I, he, he realized how badly I wanted it, and eventually we got to the heart of what had happened, you know, the, with the guys giving it to me. And he started, and he goes, well... And in the middle of it, he kind of said, well, I made a mistake. I, I, he, the fact that I wanted to play that badly, I think he – so I go, well, go tell the guys that I'm back in. He goes, I can't do that. <laughs> right? So we go back and forth, and um, I would obviously never do the things that I did then. But in retrospect, again, it, it, it did enable me to – you know, stand up for myself and try to get back into a position where I was back in the lineup. Uh, so I did tell him, I said, I'm not coming to the game tonight to watch us beat this uh, expansion team. And it was their first, <laughs> yeah. the Ducks first yeah, year, right. the Mighty Ducks in Mighty that time, Ducks, right? Yeah. He goes, you got to come to the game. I go, all right, but I'm going to sit up in that restaurant. I'm going to have my dinner and watch the game. I'm not coming near the room. I, I can't, I'm, you know, so he, he just kind of, he kind of shook his head and laughed about it, but that's what I did. I watched the game upstairs. We won. I think Burridge had a hat trick too. Like, Come I on. Kill yeah. you, I kill him. <laughs> it was hilarious. Uh, and then I goes back in the lineup the next night against San Jose, scored a goal. And I never came out of the lineup after that wow, year. That's but awesome, that's, uh, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Some of the things that happened that you look back on and kind of lucky that uh, I was able to back it up with my play, mm-hmm. yeah. but you're taking a big chance. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah I would sure. never do it in my post-playing career. I've never liked that with people that I work for. <laughs> right. But when I was playing, it was like, all right, let's let's see where this ends up. Yeah, that's that's hilarious. Um, you, you seem to have like a knack for pushing coaches' buttons. Is yeah, that, is, when you play. When you yeah. play, yeah, when you, when you play it. I mean, I was, I was hopeful that you were going to say that Terry Murray's going to put you back in the lineup every time the fuck off. But, no. yeah, but at least yeah. you got back in the next game. Yeah. But uh, there's, a, there's a story about you and uh, Jim Schoenfeld. It was there's a, a few. Fir- well, a few, yeah, probably. Everybody. We had a lot of battles, Shoney and I, yeah. too. And if I saw him today, I'd give him the biggest hug. Yeah. Like, yeah. He was great for me. Uh, I would compare him a lot to John Tortorella. Okay. I mean, he... He knew what buttons to push. There's no doubt. And he and I pushed back. Yeah, right. We had some, we had some crazy, um, some crazy arguments. And one, one, to, I can think of one in particular. I, I was, I think I went like probably the longest time in my career without scoring. I think it was like, I want to say 13 games or so. And the team was losing some games. And he comes up to me. I'm late. We we just got finished practice where he buried us because we're losing. And that was you know. That was typical back in those days. If you weren't being productive on the ice, you're going to skate. You know, it wasn't, I don't know if it worked or not, but it, it sure did. The fear factor yeah, that right. made you play games that you might not have felt like you needed to push through. And he was pushing us. So I uh, I was laying on the ice. I'm doing like snow angels, you know. At the <laughs> and Jeez. I'm looking to counting like the lights on the ceiling of the arena there in Washington, the Piney Orchard, the practice rink. And uh, here he comes, you know, and he's leaning over. He's a, he's a physical specimen. Like, he's he worked out hard. Man. Like, he's one of those coaches that was in the gym more than some of the players, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And he's looking down at me, and, you know, we've already had many encounters before this. And he says, what's wrong with you, you know? And I'm like, I'm exhausted. You know, you're killing us. And he goes, hold on, hold on, everybody in, everybody in. <laughs> so I'm, like, sitting there, and I get back up, and he calls the whole team in. He's like, no. Hey. Jones, he's tired, guys. <laughs> so he goes, uh, we're going to take this. one is a true story. He goes, we're going to take it easy and practice the next couple days, and we'll see how you guys do in the games, right? I'm like, yeah, good. That's a good idea. That's great. <laughs> so I leave the rink, come back. We play the next night. We lose. I get no goals. We play. We practice the next day nice and easy. Play the next night, lose. Oh, okay, no. I'm like, that's all right. We'll come out of it. That's what I'm thinking to myself, right? <laughs> yeah. So we get, now we have a game in Tampa. It's like a Saturday or Sunday afternoon. And it's a, or I just remember walking in the rink. It was that one huge arena. I can't even remember what it was. Was it the baseball stadium? Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. I forget the name of it. So I got my head down. You know, you're not scoring, so you're upset about that, right? The team's not winning. You're upset about that. As a player, you're probably more upset that you're not scoring because right. it's a regular season, right? <laughs> right? So I walk in, and here he is waiting for me, right? He goes, hey, come on to my office. You know, I'm, oh. I go, here we go. I got one of those blue undershirts on, you know, we used to wear. Little Stanfield. Stanfield, yeah, right? Yeah. I got that on. I'm in my, like, long underwear, and I'm just like, 
where's this one going, right? So he goes, you you be me. He, he goes, sit down. He goes, you be me, and I'll be you. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Role play. Oh, yeah, it was the best. And he goes, my hands hurt. I don't feel good. Uh, I'm exhausted, you know, like this. And it was so. It was. It's funny when I think back at it. But so, you go, and then that's my turn to be him, right? And Shoney loved to give you the fist pump. He was ahead of his time in the germs, right? Like he was like, yeah. He wasn't a handshaker. He was a fist pumper. So, I uh, I said, don't worry about it, son. You'll come out of it like that, right? Like give him the old fist pump. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, get, you know, get the f out of here, yeah. and. Um, he wasn't done with it though. It was like he, he went right to everybody in. Oh know, yeah. Out of the office. And I literally like got these like huge donut sweats in my armpits and everything. And he proceeds to like just bury me to the rest of the team. He's to Jones, he said, you know, all this you know, and uh, and we just kinda moved past it eventually. But That's we had a lot of those. We had a lot of those and I, I, I say this with great respect to him. If I didn't have those with him, I, I never would have advanced to be you know, a guy that was playing with top line players. He actually got me started in that type of role playing with uh, Pavanka and Bondra in Washington. And then Juno and Connor Walchuk there as well. And then when I was traded to Colorado, I was ready to play with guys like Sackick or Forsberg um, and, and take advantage of those opportunities and be a good complimentary player to top line players. So I learned some valuable lessons. From oh, that. No, no doubt about it. I remember you Jonesy tell you told me a few, uh, one that was really funny was when, uh, he actually traded you. Yeah. And you yeah. thought you were sick. Yeah. And you had some tests yeah. It's done. another similar thing. It's, it's really similar to that. He, <laughs> another one where he just, cause he, again, he would, I, I was never as physically prepared as I should have been. I mean, I did enough, but I didn't push to the levels that everybody, you know, that most players did. Not a lot of guys. There were some similar players to me, but I never took it to the fullest. And he it used to frustrate him, right? So <laughs> he knew how to, to bury me. Uh, so one time, uh, this is a little bit different than that one, but one time I was um, I was out to dinner with, uh, with Dale Hunter, Barubi, and a couple other guys in the team in Annapolis night, night before – a practice. We had just loved, and we'd lost a few games. I was out of the lineup though. I had a, a bad wrist or something. It probably wasn't that bad. <laughs> so he's, <laughs> I come in the next day and after at dinner hunts, he's talking about he's going to kill, you know, we're getting killed tomorrow. You know, the, it's already, because Dale was the, the captain and he and Shoney had a great relationship. He was kind of giving the guys a heads up, be ready. You know, we're going to, it's a, it's going to be a skate, right? So, he goes, and I go, I'm not saying a word. You boys are going to get your asses kicked. I'm going to be quiet. I'm going to be in the gym, right, with the strength coach was a guy named Frank Costello. So I'm looking at Frank. We're getting ready for those guys to go on the ice. And then usually Frank comes over and puts you through the pace. It's a good workout, but not, not a crazy workout. So he comes over with this list, and he starts reading to me. He's, he said, here, this Shoney wants us to do this today. So Shoney had kind of taken over <clears throat> what it's going to do. So he's reading me what I'm supposed to do. And I go, what is this guy, an asshole? You know, like this loudly, right? I didn't know Shoney was standing behind him. Oh, So he's no. like, uh, and Frank, you can see Frank's face go, oh, no. So Shoney goes, hey, tell him to wait till I get off the ice and I'm done with these guys <laughs> and he, I'll work oh him out God. too. So now all the guys I was laughing at at dinner the night before, uh, they can't wait to get off the ice. He took it easy <laughs> oh, yeah. on them too. And now here he comes and he got, I got this weight vest on. And I mean, he buried me so badly in that gym and the guy, they're all walking by laughing. See you buddy. They're going for lunch. You know, and I just, I was there for like three and a half hours. No way. Getting crushed by him. Oh, but he God. did it. He did everything with me. Like wow. and better, and better than I was doing. Like stronger, better. Like it was a, it's a, a great wake man. up call for like a humbling a, experience. A, oh my yeah. god! But worth it in the end. Like, I I I would change some of the things the way I handled them. I was immature, you right. know, But and oftentimes just trying to get my own self going by, you know, just doing something that kind of rocked the rocked the boat and saw. It. I, if I would react and get out of a slump, whatever, I, sometimes I tell the coach, whatever. Yeah. And yeah. I, to try to, you know, get myself going. And it, it worked. And it, for the most part, it worked. But luckily, I had coaches that kind of understood that and uh, let me get away with enough to, 
survive and not hate me too bad. Right. Well, it showed you cared too, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they noticed that you like it was coming from a place of like you really wanted. Yeah. You right. I mean, it wasn't yeah, like just was being a, a dick and. Yeah, it was misdirected sometimes on yeah, my part. To be I'm honest sure. with yeah. you, but for the most part, I was really proud to play in the NHL and I wanted to be a pr- uh, productive player. Yeah. Yeah. What do you got? Oh, I was just going to ask uh, about uh, playing for Hartley. Yeah. Um, how, how did I was you... there a short time with him. Oh, so wasn't... Yeah. Okay. So that was, uh, and he was, he was actually really good to me. I, I, you know, I was battling back from a significant knee injury. Wasn't sure. Like I'd missed a long time, a lot longer than I was supposed to with my first ACL injury. And um, so I only played a handful of games for Rob. And then I was traded to the Flyers. Yeah. And, uh, Got, was on fire here, and po- Pode's, had, you know, Sean Podine had gone to Colorado, and he he was struggling when he first got there, and I was playing with Lindros and Leclerc, so I was <clears throat> racking up points with those guys, and our line was in, like, on the highlights almost every night, and so Pode's was, you know, pressing, and I saw Hartley when I went to Colorado, he said, I told Pode, you know, just... You know, just relax. But what he's doing has nothing to do with what you're doing. But he said, "I'm, you know, I'm happy that you're doing well and stuff like that." So, Bob Hartley and I always had, you know, a good relationship. Um, but again, I didn't play for him for very long. Okay, because he played four games down in the American I League, did. right? In Hershey with him. I played in Hershey against the uh, against the Flyers. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, fans. and that's uh, Neil Neil Little knocked me out with an elbow. By like, come I, on, I swear to God, I went to go <laughs> behind the net. I'd been out for almost a year. And I just came back, and I still wasn't – my knee was still funky, right? So, and, and it really was from the time I returned. But anyway, I remember going to get the puck behind the net, and, and Litz lit me up with an elbow no in the way. head. Oh, yeah. Well, you like, had scored two PP goals yeah, in yeah, the first probably, 10 minutes, yeah. right? And, and I could barely like I could barely move at that time, but I was I, – I, I forgot about the elbow because yeah. I remember saying something to you a few years back, like uh, when, you know, Jonesy tips one in, yeah. scores another power play goal, well, then – Billy sends Frankie out, and he starts running around. And then I forgot about him getting elbow, but I was saying to him, I think Jonesy had said, like, oh, this animal started running around. I'm like, all right, boys, I feel good. I'm oh, yeah, no, I, that did happen, yeah. too. Because I was supposed to play the next night, too, and they're like, uh, are you going to play? Nah. I'm, yeah, not feeling I've it. I've done enough. I'm ready to go back up. And I went. I took a, I had a limo come pick me up from Atlantic City in Hershey, drive me all the way to, to AC. I spent the night there, and I, that's, a, that's the truth. Man. Oh, my God. Imagine oh. that after missing a year, play three games and say, oh, I'm good. I'm, I'm good. I'm yeah. <laughs> Go I down to the jungle can't and blame deal with the animal. animal yeah. running around. That, that, that barn was always jumping, too, in the family. Oh, yeah. They would go there and I knew the, the animal, luckily. Oh, okay, right. Because he, oh, was, in he was, oh, in was in Washington. He was in Washington. That's right. We had kind of buddied up in training camp. Oh, thank God. Uh, thank yeah, God, I, I, right. I knew the guys that I needed to hang around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, well, speaking of tough guys, I mean, besides yourself, who is the toughest guy in, in your era? <laughs> That's a tough one to come up with here. Peter White? <laughs> white, oh, white bread. bread yeah. oh, white bread. <laughs> That's great. My old liney. Yeah. Uh, no, I know the toughest guy I fought was Richie Pilon. And that, All right. that, uh, that was a... That was a mistake for anyone who wants to watch it on YouTube. I'm lucky to be alive today. Really? Oh, oh my God. Check it out. He threw a left. I'd, I'd never, like I told you guys, I hadn't fought before. This is still my first year in the playoffs, I think. And uh, everything is getting wild. Uh, Mick Vakota is running around for oh, the I Islanders. Oh, yeah. Pilon. I can't remember if Kasparaitis was. He was there at that time. I fought him a couple of times. That was that was nothing. Um, but Pilon, so he wore the visor because he had had an eye injury. I didn't know that. Because I didn't, you don't know everybody when you first arrive, right. Right. and he's big, strong guy. I realized, but I said, I saw Vakoda over here. <laughs> I said, eh, yeah. that ain't <laughs> happening. And I saw him, and I'm like, all right, I'll try this, you know. And I said, let's go. And I was thinking I'd have to try to get his shield off, whatever. And he just, oh, yeah. He just popped Pulls his off. helmet off, and I'm oh. like, I never saw this before, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then I threw a couple rights. I tried to, like, it's it's funny. You guys will watch it later. You'll laugh. But I throw a couple rights, and then all of a sudden, here the, here comes these things I've never seen in my life. <laughs> it's a flurry. Oh, my helmet came off. It ended up all the way on the other side of the ice. We were near the player's bench. It ended up by the penalty box. Oh, my God. But, uh, that's how hard this guy was throwing punches. And I just remember, I'm lucky I got up from that. And oh. uh, I got up, I got over, I kind of worked my way to the penalty box, stumble in, and I'm like, that didn't go very well. You know? <laughs> it didn't go well. I get to the bench, and Dale Hunter's sitting beside me. He goes, what are you doing? And I'm like, what do you mean? 
He goes, why are you fighting that guy? I, I said, I thought he was a European. He had a mask. He, he goes, no, no. He's no, not no. A European. No, no. <laughs> you don't want to do that again. Yeah, and that's the same year. That's the same year that Dale Hunter in the playoffs, that series against the Islanders, ran Pierre Turgeon. Oh, right. Okay? Yeah, so geez. at that point, Terry Murray was the coach again, obviously, that season. And in the playoffs, he didn't want to play the young guys. So I was bumped to the fourth line. I was never happier to not be on the ice for that because Richie Pilon, after Hunter hit Terzo, oh, yeah. Richie oh. Pilon was on the ice, and I knew he'd be coming for oh, me. And I yeah. was like watching going, oh, <laughs> You're yeah, like, yes. yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> somebody else take that guy because I don't want that. That's we too were, funny. We were talking about that. I talked to Chief today um, this morning, and uh, – I'm like, what are you doing? Sleeping? Oh, working out, big boy. Oh, training. Yeah. But anyway, uh, <laughs> yeah, he had told me this story before. Um, I, 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 yeah, you were there for the Pierre Turgeon hit. He told me this story that uh, David Poyle called Huntsy in after the game. Yeah. And um, Poyle was in there, maybe the assistant coaches, but Murph wasn't there. Yeah. That he saw, and he said, what are you doing? And he goes, you know what? I'm tired of these this guy and this guy not showing yeah, up. Yeah, you know, that was a big part of it. And he goes, and it pisses me off, and I'm sick of losing, and that's why I did it. And then as soon as he says that, he goes, he hears, what? And he goes, <laughs> what the fuck is that? And he goes, oh, it's just Murph puking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he said, he was yeah. So oh, yeah. He was, <laughs> it was he's bad. Like, not so long. Oh, that, it's just Murph puking. <laughs> if you look back at that series, uh -huh. Huntsy had seven goals in that series wow. against the Islanders. We ended up losing to them. Uh, three of the games in overtime. This is a this is another f funny story. So like like I said, I was on the fourth line. So it was my the first couple of games in the series. We literally would play two shifts in the first period. It was myself, Randy Burridge, and Alan May was playing center. He was normally a winger. Uh, that was our fourth line. And Burridge had numerous knee problems because he was a obviously he was an all star. I think a couple years before that. So. We'd play a couple shifts in the first. We wouldn't get another shift. Like you literally, wow. they tell this is when you could go on the ice after the um, intermission oh, and get right. a skate, get a skate. Yeah, in, yeah, right? get a, yeah, 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 a couple laps. Yeah, <laughs> everyone's skating hard. Like, it's embarrassing <laughs> when you think about it, right? We're all hustling and laughing and whatever. We're opening the door though. We're like, that's all we're doing, just opening the door for two periods. Now, game, I think it's game two goes to overtime. Double overtime, if I'm not mistaken. I think we got one shift in the first overtime, and then it gets to double overtime, and the bench is – these guys are tired. It's yeah. three lines. That's all they're doing. All, none of us were even mixed into the other lines. Like, we just sat there together. It's amazing. So they we get on the ice, double overtime, and I think Ray Ferraro scores right away. Like, we barely stepped on the ice, oh. so they score. We lose the game. We play the next night – so I think it's a single overtime game. We haven't played since the first period again. You guys get out there in the net, like within oh, seconds, oh. back to back. It's my rookie year. Third game in a row, double overtime. First shift of double overtime. We're on the ice, our line, they score. Come on. Okay, I swear to God, the Whoa. series still isn't over yet. <laughs> it's 3-1 at that time. God. Yeah, so they went, and Ferraro was in on, like, all of them, and I'd been yapping from the bench. I mean, if you're not playing, you oh, can't yeah, really you got yap. To. Like that's, yeah. You're trying to do something to contribute and stay positive, right? So they scored the third one in overtime, and the guy, my – my nickname was OT after that, right? These guys, my rookie year, AOT, you were up there, you know? So, That's great. And then, then Huntsy's thing happened in the game after that. But uh, I remember Randy Burridge got sat out after the third one. He didn't play the next night. I said, I, I told you I had my man. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Oh, that's Stuff awesome. in the stands. Yeah. But that was a bad experience. Terry man. Murray apologized, though, after that. Like really? He said, I'm sorry, you know, that uh, – we didn't keep you guys more involved, and he should have. I mean, yeah. but the game back then, rookies really didn't play when the playoffs yeah, rolled around. Animal, you, weren't, yeah. you know, it's you're different. lucky to be in the lineup kind of yeah. attitude or atmosphere. So, um, but that was a, that was an interesting time because it, it's you make the NHL, you play in the regular season, you've never really played in the NHL till you play in the playoffs. Right. Like you've never really played until you're going up with everything on the line and everybody watching. I mm -hmm, mean, that's yeah. when people watch hockey. The regular season's great. It's a good, you know, an escape for people getting home from work. But they pay attention when you're in the playoffs. And when you're not in the playoffs, you're really not playing. Right. That's the way I always looked yeah. at it. So when the playoffs came around, you wanted to really make everybody proud. Your friends at home in Canada are yep. watching. You know, they're both 
the Canadian networks are following it, the American networks are following it, and it's a chance to like if you're an average player to do something spectacular and you know be John Drews or some yeah, of these guys yeah, that we yeah, watch true. get on a run, right? And mm-hmm. that's that's what the playoffs were for sure. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Well, when you came to Philly, <clears throat> I think it was your the second year after the you guys had a really great run um, in the playoffs yep. there, yep. and uh, you know what was that season like? I know uh, Chief <laughs> Chief wanted me to bring up something, but I'll let you like answer that first. Well, we played the year before. There's a funny story with Chief. The year before we played, um, we played the Leafs in I think ninety eight, ninety nine, maybe. Yes, yeah. and they. They beat us in six games, but my Roger Nilsson was the coach that year. Right. Uh, this before the cancer had come back or before he'd gotten really sick. And Roger came to me before the series. Now, I was fired up because I was playing in Toronto. I grew up in Brantford just down the road. It's a big deal. You and right? some other player. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. What's his name? Uh, yeah. Wayne, Wayne, I think Wayne. we're combined for the most points in NHL history from two guys from the same hometown. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we're playing the Leafs, and I'm fired up for it. And um, we get uh, my job. Part Roger calls me in the room. and goes, hey. And Roger's you know very religious man. Yeah. He's very just a, a real nice guy. He says, hey, Jonesy, you know, like, if you ever get any dirt on the other players, you know, don't, yeah, this is the time to use it. You know, you can like, it's like giving me the green light to yeah. like, verbally abuse these guys. Right. <laughs> he's like, you're going to be out there against the Thomas line. Sundin and Thomas were lighting it up. And Thomas was always one of my favorite players. Like I grew up being a Leaf fan before I was ever drafted to the NHL. He was playing and I'd be watching wow. him thinking, man, this guy's amazing. All of a sudden I'm being asked, you know, to, to go up against a guy that I really respected and loved the way he played. So I kept leaning on him, saying stuff in his ear. The whole series it was a very low-scoring series. I think I think they only scored nine goals and beat us in a six-game series, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it, was, it was that tight checking of a series. So at the end of the series, we're shaking hands, and I'm like, hey, good, you know, whatever, good luck. And here comes Stevie Dunn. grabs my hand. He holds it really tight. He says... I swear on my kids' heads, I'm gonna, you know, effing yeah. kill you next year. Wow! I'm like, oh, good luck, you know, good luck to you. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, it's it's someone I really like. Appreciated the way he played. He's a good, honest, hard player. Anyway, the next year comes around in training camp. <laughs> this is a funny chief story there too. In training camp, um, I get I'm injured. I hurt my knee worse, and I had to have a surgery, and I'm out for the first 25 games. So. When you know the first game back is against the Leafs, right? Oh, no. Not a very smart move on my part, right? <laughs> yeah. So Chief remembers the story. We've been kind of laughing. Well, so he's calling me during the day. He's like, hey, that Thomas is going to kick your ass tonight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To hang up the phone, right? <laughs> I, so I get to the rink. That's all I'm thinking about. Oh, of course. I know yeah. You have to know because yeah, oh, that yeah. was your job. But I get to the rink, and all I'm thinking about, how's this going to play out, right? So sure enough, starting lineup, Lindros, LeClaire, Jones, Thomas, Sundin, and whoever was on the other line, maybe Derek King or something. I don't even know. So I'm, I'm a left-hand shot on the right side, so I'm on the other side. Thomas is the same, so we're not lined up against each other. We're both across looking at each other, and I'm not really looking at him, but he's looking at me. <laughs> so I could feel – I could just knew. So the puck drops, and here he comes, and we have this fight. And it was nothing. Like, he's a tough guy too, but I, I managed to get a good grip on him and threw a couple punches and – looked like I was reading the newspaper. I pretend that I was bored fighting them, right? <laughs> so it ends, and I go by the leaf bench right after, and I'm like, who's next, boy? Oh. <laughs> who's that? And Ty yeah. Domi jumps up, his helmet almost blew Oh, up I'm sure, right? I am, you know, like, ah, <laughs> you got to earn that, Ty, you know, whatever. So I, I headed over to the penalty box. I get out, and then for from that point on, every time we play the Leafs, Ty would be like, are we going? Are we going? I go, yep, tonight's the night. And then I go, nah. <laughs> Not tonight. Not tonight. <laughs> Not tonight. But Peruby will fight you. So Get them all steamed that's up. That's great. That is yeah. priceless. He, he was telling me, uh, I'll let you tell it if you want, but he was he was telling me about when you guys were playing Jersey in the playoffs and you, you two are coming off the ice in the, the old building, uh, Continental Airlines. And uh, you two are, like, coming off the ice in the Zamboni and you're like, these coaches, I, I don't think they know what's going on. I'm going to go talk to them and then – you know, I'll let you take it for is this when Chief scored? Rammer, when Rammer. Oh, yeah, when Chief scored the goal, Well, right? yeah, but he said you went in there and said, this oh, is Oh, yeah, what? yeah, that happened, yeah. And I'll give Rammer credit. He was great at just letting me, 
you know, yeah. go in. So coaches always come in usually, uh, some teams, seven minutes before the mm-hmm. intermission ends, right? And they have a message they want to show the guy. Sometimes they bring out the, the chalkboard thing, whatever, the dry erase board drops of a few things that the other team's doing, adjustments, whatever. And he, they do that even before the game, right? So Rammer had his time. He'd come in, and every time he'd leave, I go, "All right, boys, here's what he meant to say." And <laughs> I'd get up with the board and I'd draw. Like it was, it was pretty funny. And I was, yeah. I was intense. I was, I was into it too, right? So they, they would laugh about that, and I would push him out of the way. I would go in. Sometimes Clark would be in the coach's office in between periods, and I'd be, you know, drawing. We got to do this, and Rammer would like. He took it like he's. It's funny looking back on it. He was probably shaking his head and laughing about it. Yeah, right. I really felt like I was like contributing to <laughs> a seven success. So we're, we're playing game four in Newark, or at Meadowlands at that time yeah. maybe, and it's um, we're up two one in the series. And and that's the third round con- conference finals, so we just won the previous game in New Jersey. We're going again, and th- they had an unbelievably good team. And uh, Chiefs out there, we're up two to one late in the game, and with like three minutes left, I think. And Dan McGillis takes a shot from the point, and Baruby tipped it in, scores. And I'm sitting beside Rick Tockett, right? And I go, talks like celebrating. I go. What's going on here? Like in talks, like why? Why I'm wondering why I'm not really celebrating. I go, how the hell did Barubi get on the ice? <laughs> right? And I turn around at Ram where I'm yelling at him and everything. Oh yeah! <laughs> so the chief just loved it. Yeah. So we get in the locker room after the game, and Chief's happy. You know, it's a tip-in goal, and now we're up three to one in the series. But I'm sitting there, and I really let's quiet for a minute. It's just so I go, hey Gilly, because Dan McGillis had shot the puck. I go, hey Gilly, nice goal, pal. Nice goal, right? Because you know the guy. Yeah, yeah, the guy yeah, yeah. There's always a little bit of a yeah. wonder if a guy really tipped the puck. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Right? She's looking <laughs> over at me. <laughs> oh, it was fun. Oh, that's beautiful. We man. had good times, man. Oh, that's oh, funny. The best. That's so awesome, man. Yeah, he told me that. He told me. Well, that the other time too. in training, we were in that uh, training camp, and I ended up hurting my knee for 25 games. We had a bike ride or a run for in Peterborough, Ontario, for oh, Roger yeah. Nielsen. I remember that? Yeah. And I, you know, I was, I had the knee issues when I left Colorado. I come, I would ride a stationary bike, right? So I thought, I'll be fine. I can ride this bike. It's 25 miles up huge hills. Well, on the stationary bike, I was never up on the seat, like going. So part of my knee injury was that uh, unbeknownst to me at this point that I couldn't get up. Like I couldn't stand and really push to get up a hill. So I had to, I did that 25 mile bike ride um, sitting down. Oh, up hills, man. okay. Ugh. So, and I, I'm really not great at knowing what gears were. Like it was like I never really <laughs> did much on the bike. So I tell Chief, I go, "Hey, we'll ride together." Everyone's leaving like 45 seconds apart individually. He goes, "Yeah, no problem." So I start pedaling on this bike, and I swear, not a minute and a half later, here he comes right by me. He's gone. I go, "Hey, Chief." Screw you. He's still, you know, and he's gone. He's gone. He's up there. I, I, I never saw him again. Neil Little was the backup back then, even you know, and mostly in the minors at this point. And uh, Litz was the last guy to leave. Well, he goes by me, right? <laughs> and there's a van, like, driving around, just in a, like a Jeep with um, water and all this stuff. And if there's an emergency, well, I, I always joked around so much that – Nobody ever really took me serious. <laughs> so I'm waving at him going, hey, like everyone's gone. Like I'm literally like no one's in sight. I can, I'm going up these hills. He never stopped to get me. So I just kept riding. Okay. I finished the 25 mile thing. My knee was like ruined for, oh, for two I'm months. Sure, yeah. Stuff was popping everywhere. Oh. Right. And my, <laughs> between my leg, my ass was so sore. When oh. I, got out, I couldn't even walk. Right. So I'm two and a half hours behind everybody. Two and a half hours behind, <laughs> wow. and no one knows. Like no one's even asking about me, right? <laughs> so I show up at Roger Nielsen's place. They're all having a barbecue, celebrating. Guys are in the pool. I walk right to the hot tub. I sit in that hot tub, and I'm like, "Oh my god!" I don't. I, don't, I honestly, I don't know what's happened, right? <laughs> oh, so I'm, <laughs> the reporters not around. They go, "Hey, how the right go?" I all. Oh, it was great. I came third. That's what I told him. So the next day in the paper, it's like, <laughs> <laughs> two and a half hours behind everybody. And no one missed two months. 
Yeah. Oh my god! And the guy I was waving at thought I was kidding. I wanted the jeep to pick me up, but yeah. I was yeah. in trouble, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 They're like, I'll leave Jones you alone. Oh, you just screw around. Oh yeah. Oh my god. Probably That's still feeling that. That was one. the end of that. That was the end of that for training camps for me. That was it. Oh, wow. That that, uh, that run you were talking about, man. Like you guys are up three one. Yeah. In that series, it's the toughest thing. That's the toughest memory ever. It's the greatest memories I have as far as a team and teammates. Yeah. Um, you know, think back to the guys on that team, Bundy, uh, Dan McGillis, who I mentioned, Luke Richardson. And yeah. a lot of the guys went on to be, you know, coaches. Yep. Luke finally, can, you know, yeah. great to see him get to Chicago. He's such a wonderful human being. And, he is. Um, Chief was there. Craig Bruby went on. Rick Tockett was on that team. Mm -hmm. Recky went on. He's coached. And now, I don't know if it's management might be his next thing. Um, we had a lot of great hockey players on that yeah. team. Uh, Johnny LeClaire. Uh, yeah. And, of course, Lindros missed most of it. Came back late. But there was um, there was a, a great group of players. Keith Primo really coming into his own that, that season as well. And uh, I think we were a lot maybe even a lot better than we thought we were when I look back on it. If you look at yeah. that team, you're like, whoa. Yeah, it was a hell of a – Clarky put and, together a great team. And I, year, I for honestly, sure. I mean, I was I was, I was still – I was in Phantoms then, and I'm like, we're going to win. I mean, we're going to win the yeah, Cup Yeah, it felt Europe, like it's, you, you know, know what I mean? Like, it, was a, it was amazing. And then to have it – you know, to be up 3-1 now, I, I'm the worst guy for being up 3-1. It happened to me – it happened to me four times in my career – the first time I was an extra guy in Washington after I started the minors, I was called up. And I swear it's karma because, you know, when you're an extra guy, I was like eighth on the depth chart, and we were just getting skated every day, right? When there was the shuttle bus would have had to crash if we were going to get in the lineup. <laughs> like, literally, there had to be 10 guys out, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. So Barry trots a skate, a skate, and I just remember thinking to myself, man, I hope this thing... I hope this thing like and they were the caps were good that year. They're up on the penguins three to one. This one in ninety two, ninety one, ninety two. And I'm thinking we're gonna be here a long time. Game four, the caps win in Pittsburgh eight to four. Dino Cicerelli scores four goals. Wow. And they're up three games to one on Mario Lemieux, Yarmer Yager, Ron Francis, all these guys, right? The Penguins come back. Mario designs how the team's going to play. They're going to defend first. He draws it up. Scotty Bowman's coaching, of course. He a lot of obviously gets a lot of credit, even if Mario, you know, just the fact Mario bought into whatever they were doing. Yeah. And they come back and beat the Caps four games to three. And I was kind of like, uh, you know, this isn't too bad because yeah. I knew I wasn't going to play. Right, right. If right. they won the cup, it was like. I'm I'm in the organization, but you know, just selfish, just stupid. Right. right? Well, that's just the way it was. So, human nature. So then the next, I, I believe that that haunted me the rest of my career. Because <laughs> then we times. got up three games to one um, on the Penguins again, actually, and lost that series in seven, of course. And then I went to Colorado, and we were up three games to one on Edmonton with. Patrick Waugh and Nett, they had won the cup in 96. This would be 98. And we blew that series. Edmonton oh, beat wow. us. And then here we go again. And I remember driving, I, I absolutely remember being up three games to one, driving back from Newark to Philly thinking, no. Yeah. You know, like I just, I wished it was three games to two, but yeah. not. Not, not from 3-1, just going 2-2. Two, two, three yeah, two, two. Right. yeah, right. You know, I was just in the back of my mind because I'd yeah. seen it before. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then all of a sudden, here we go again. And, uh, you know, we blew game five at home. All three times that I was on the ice were at home. Game sevens, at home, and lost all three of them oh. to blow three game to one leads in the last one of my career. So I always blame it on myself for uh, the bad karma oh. I delivered oh, back man. as an extra guy. So if you're arriving in the NHL right now, Did, don't do that. Yeah, do right. Skate all the way right. to the end. Oh, um, Riley had a, a, a funny question about um, the overtime game in Pitt. Mm. Like, that was wild. Like, he had 30 minutes of ice. Yeah, 30 minutes of ice that game? At 37 minutes and 50 seconds, I had no shots on goal. I had no <laughs> missed shots. I had no hits. I had no giveaways. There you go. <laughs> Uh, the game sheet sits at my house. It's one of my proudest moments. Oh, my God. And I was still in the NHL. That's the best part. 
<laughs> and I was on for the winning goal by Primo. I was a plus one. Oh, no yeah, way. Wow. So the guys were... still laugh about it whenever we see the guys on that. That was that year. That was part of that run. Yeah. The Penguins won the first two games in Philly. They're up two games to nothing. We beat Buffalo in round number one, Hoshik and that, which was always difficult for the Flyers. We got by them. We're down two nothing, lose both games at home. And uh, in that second game, I was going, giving it to Bugner and he's giving it to me around center ice. It's a lopsided score. They're winning like six, three and Luke Richardson sees it and he can't get there fast enough for me. Right? So he takes a slap shot. Literally we're in the neutral zone. He takes a slap shot from the top of the circles and he hits Bob Bugner right in the chest and knocks him down. <laughs> no and way. I'm laughing, you know, like it's, it's just like, it was so fun. I couldn't believe it. So <laughs> after the game that put us down to nothing, the league is getting calls from Pittsburgh and saying, Hey, the Richardson so- shot the puck on purpose and hit Bugner. He, you know, you got to suspend him. So, they go to Clarkey, and uh, the league says, hey, Clarkey, you know, your guy Richardson shot the puck on purpose at Bugner. You know, what's – what? Do you, he goes, hold on. Luke Richardson aimed at something and hit it? Yeah. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't believe uh, you. So uh, Luke got to stay in the lineup. Oh so he was in God. game in game three in Pittsburgh, which we won in overtime. This is when Andy Delmore came out of the clouds yeah, and, and played some great Patrick. hockey. Uh, <laughs> I did have a goal and two assists that game. So if, Not you know, a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We won 4-3 in overtime. I set Delhi up in overtime. Yep. All everyone remembers the next night and the, or the two nights later in the five overtime game. <laughs> yeah. But um, – I, I just remember going to the movies with talk at the night before in Pittsburgh and we rented a car cause the movie theater is so far away from the hotel. Yeah. We went in and watched the movie. We come out, the car's running that we rented and it's locked. <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah. This is back on. For, that's amazing because now you can never lock the car. Wouldn't stay locked. Right. Unlock. Right. Yeah. So we had to call a tow truck, come get it, pick us up. And we got back in time for the end of curfew. We were in time. And uh, I just remember laughing about that. Next night, I'm thinking I'm it's nearing the end of my career. So I'm thinking I'm going to play like 13 minutes, whatever. So I'll get there. And somebody got hurt in the first period for us, too. So all of a sudden, here we go. And we go. And we go. <laughs> and we go. I had some shifts where I would jump on the ice, step three three strides one way stop at the red line skate to our blue line stop turn around and go next and Come climb on. in the bench and like i remember mark recce going already <laughs> you know, I'm, get out <laughs> there yes. i'm done so that was that was like that was an amazing experience so like you just oh man watching yeah. it and then uh, and then winning that game to go up two nothing and then i think yager played almost 70 minutes in holy that game. And uh, I remember thinking, Insane. you know what, we're going to win this series. And then we won the next two games, you know, beat them four straight after being down 2 yeah, nothing, including right. back-to-back overtime games in Pittsburgh, the fifth overtime game as well. That's the one, eh, too, that yeah. game four, you win that in overtime now. That's it's it. like That changed everything. Yeah. So changed then, everything. And then we get to the next series, and we're up 3-1 on the Devils, who mm-hmm. were an amazing team and had been forever, Brodeur and Stevens and yep. Danico and all, their, all the players they had. And... Just when everything was going right, it stopped. Yeah. So and that's the one time I look back and had great memories from getting to that point, but not uh, not putting it away was tough for sure. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, shifting gears to uh, current day Flyers, Tortorella. Yep. I mean, you obviously yep. you know him, you yep. know what he's all about. I mean, what are your thoughts on the direction? I, I think it's the, the right coach at the right time. I agree. I mean, I watched and covered too many games last year where – the team lost, but they lost in a way that just wasn't acceptable. Exactly that. And I'm sure there's a lot of players in that room that felt the same way, mm-hmm. but they couldn't stop it. And I think it was personnel driven. Um, and now I think they have a coach to to push those buttons. Couturier's health means everything to this team. It has yeah. for a long time. Yep. Like he has been their most important player, as much as all the great stuff that Giroux did. Couturier has been that guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're playing center. You're on the top line. You're asked to cover the other team. He's the he's our he's not Bergeron, but he's as close as we have, and as close as many teams have to yeah. that type of player. Right. So his health was a big part of what happened last year, and he's a very proud player. Mm-hmm. Like you're not he he'll fight if he has to. Like, he will. You're, you're right. not going to embarrass him. So having him back instantly makes this team better. Um, you're always concerned when someone's returning from injury. 
but all indications are that he's going to be good to go. And that's great. Yeah. So that, that changes a lot of my thought process right away. And, uh, as far as fan perception of the team, I totally get it. I watched it. I, yeah. I watched it. It's just, this is a show me business. So they they have a lot to prove. And if you're a player, I think I would be extremely motivated to go out there knowing that the bar is really low. Yeah. Your fan base does not think very highly of you. And I would go out there to and have a chip on my shoulder to prove, you know, that we in this locker room are a lot better than we're being given credit mm -hmm. and find a way to take that, you know, underdog mentality and turn it into a much, much better season and a much more enjoyable season to watch because it is the Flyers. Yeah. You know, and you did your part with this team for a long time, Riley, and providing fans, you know, what they enjoy. Um, and that's good, tough hockey. And you can play tough hockey without the fights. Um, you need to get there. You need to have energy. You need to, you know, have that snarl about you. You need to have that work ethic that, just bleeds through every shift that you're on the ice. And I think Torts is the right guy to get them to that point because you have to practice extremely hard. Yeah. Yeah. You you have to overachieve. And to do that you gotta be all in. Yeah. And he's if you're not all in, you're not gonna be here. <laughs> That's right. So he's at the point in his career, he's you know, he's got all kinds of money. Yeah, you don't money. need the money for right. sure. He's, you know, an extremely knowledgeable guy that has done everything in the game and he's won a cup. Yep. So he's here to, to get things right. I think he's the right guy at the right time. Yeah, I, I agree. And a couple of those additions you talked about, like the, the fight or just yep. that, you know, that, that, that ingredient. I mean, they had D'Angelo, which is an emotional yeah. guy, right? Obviously a good player, emotional emotional guy. And then uh, Nick Delorier. Yep. I mean, you bring in a guy that like, Philly fans will love. I, I don't think the, f the fans know what he's all about no, yet. No, they you don't. Know? They, they don't yet, but he's, you know, he's got to prove it again, yep. which he's done his whole career. Yep. And what I love about watching him play, and this is one of the things I noticed at ice level in games in Anaheim, the kids on that Ducks team just gravitated to him. Mm -hmm. You know, the Zegrises and all the young stars that they have around there. They had a lot of young players coming at the same yeah. time, and they they love that guy. So he gets it. He can skate. He can skate, yeah. So he's the fact he gets in on the four check is huge. Yep. And the fact that he's a, a willingness to get under the skin of the opposition at the same time, no one's going to worry him. Right. And he's going to pull other guys into the fight. Exactly. You know, you're going to have no choice. And we haven't seen guys, we haven't seen Konechny play with a group of players around him that are going to make him real comfortable. Yeah, because so true. Travis is a really skilled hockey player, but he's at his best when he's bugging the other guys. Yeah, 100%. right. Yeah, and he's yeah. a great yapper. Like he's he's got a real he's got it. Yeah. yeah. Um, but when you play during the pandemic, you play the same teams yeah. all the time, and you don't have a tough team. Yeah. It's not fun. No. So I, I'm not surprised some of the guys' numbers went down because it, I wouldn't have liked it if I didn't have guys around me to to back me up every night it's it becomes old like yeah. the same guys coming at you and they're and in many cases within that division that year those teams were tougher yeah and it wasn't a good environment so that got away from this team and i think that's where we're going to see an improvement doesn't mean they're you know winning a stanley cup but they're they're going to cause issues yeah i agree yeah, and I agree. other teams are not going to come in here licking their chops like they were last exactly year, right. for sure they'll have an identity at the very least and, and you'll know that you're in a, in a dog fight you know that, you that's the way i look at yeah. it and I, again i always and i'm sure you do this too I, I look at it what would i be feeling like if i was a player on that team yeah and i know i remember when baruby was traded to the caps and i it was at a it was at the draft one of the first televised drafts and i saw david poyle mouth the words to the other GM of the Calgary. I think it might have been Doug Risewell at that time. I'm not, not sure. Craig Berube. Like I saw the words, come out and I was like, yes. And that was after my first season. Yeah. And <laughs> sure enough, he showed up there, and our team was better, tougher, and I was a better player for it. Right. So I think there's going to be other guys in this Flyers lineup that are going to benefit from the type of players that are around them they're going to be better players and the locker room is going to be more together there's something about teams that play hard like that that yeah. really bring guys together the excuses leave and um, you know i think that's kind of the idea behind what's happening right now
Yeah. Yeah. And building off that, Torts recently talked about the locker room. Right, I don't know if you saw those I quotes. Didn't. No, I didn't. Yeah, he just talked about we have to address the locker room. I think they were. He was asked about uh, the captain. Yep. And he's like, "Well, we're gonna we're gonna need to clean up the locker room." So everything you're saying is kind of pointing towards strengthening the locker room, right? You're adding a guy like Delorier and a veteran guy, D'Angelo. D'Angelo yeah. is a positive energy. You he know what I mean? Is, he, he is a high energy guy, and he. I watched. Can ripple. I, I can't tell you how many times I watched him play and and thought, man, I wish he was playing for the Flyers. Yeah. And he played like he wished he was playing for the Flyers. Yeah. Like every time he played him, he chased Travis Sanheim every shift. Yeah. And I thought, you know what? It's because that draft, Sanheim was picked. That's right. He said that by on the, the Flyers. Show. I watched it. Yeah. I watched that. him every shift he went after Sanheim. And That's it funny. wasn't about Travis. <laughs> right. It was about him being selected before D'Angelo to the Flyers. Yep. So that part is something that I think that uh, we're going to, you know, benefit from. And he's also a very good hockey player. I mean, especially offensively. Yeah. Um, I think he's going to make Provorov a better player. I, I know Provorov's a good player. He had a really bad year. So you got to unlock him again. Yeah. And I think the way that they're building this team, they're going to they're gonna have some players that performed poorly last year that are going to get back to the, playing the way that they're capable of playing. Yeah. Yeah. He, uh, Tony actually said on the show he he was like I'm like yeah this is this is my chance and then the Flyers took Sandy so oh, yeah. it's funny that you say that, that you I watched it that I see it from because upstairs I yeah. you know you see it yeah and I'm one I, I remember noticing it once like a defenseman to go after another defenseman <laughs> yeah I know right it's so like, every the time fuck? there's a whistle he goes right up to him like this guy he's yeah you know, oh he, he got a chip on his shoulder no question he does. yeah and that and that's kind of gonna fit in nicely with what this what this team is trying to get to. And I, I think they're going to get to it. I think they're going to eventually, you know, continue to climb this thing. And yep. I'm curious to see this year how it works out, but in a couple of years, what, uh, what we've got here. And uh, it's got, it has to be a lot better than what we had last year. Yeah. That was disappointing for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. With li limited uh, cap space, they made some, you know, say, locker room type moves like like you know like adding adding emotion to the team yep. obviously to complement torts and and add that philly type of oh, vibration yeah. that has been missing yep. right i mean it's and, like, then, and then watch players you know like farabee when he gets back yeah just we haven't seen them play in that environment and you, yeah you, you'll i think you can be surprised sometimes what that means to a player to know that there's a room full of guys that have his back yeah like it's one thing to be funny and have a good time, and then it's another thing to come together as a team. Yeah, right. And feel that pressure, and know that you know you got enough inside to get through it. Yeah, and enough players around if you don't have as much inside to help you get through it. And I think that's something that's going to be interesting to follow with this team. I yeah, hundred percent. Well, I know Torts has already kind of like uh, sent the ripple across, you know, across the team. I mean, they, it was strongly recommended that they came in early, which they're all all mm -hmm. here skating, and you know, I think everyone's got that element of I don't say fear, but you know, like they they, they know what what's coming, and I, I'd like to think that they're all prepared for what's yeah, to come. Yeah, and they you know they prepare so much better than I know. Going back to my day, I'm, I know you were really into getting ready to play. Um, some of us back in the day weren't, but that's all changed. But there's another side to that where you can do all you want in the gym and all the rest, but inside is where it matters. Yeah. Once right. You, gotta, you have to physically be ready, but you got to be able to, that puck's mine. I'm, yeah. Right. I'm getting yes. that, puck. that attitude. Mindset. I'm going in there and I'm coming out with it yep. no matter what happens. And I think that's something that's going to change. The psyche is going to change. I agree. Every puck battle is going to be different now. And if you lose it, you're going to be accountable for what you just lost. Mm -hmm. 100%. So that's that, that part, I think is uh, you know one of the the great strengths of what uh, John Tortorella does. Yeah, and I know him personally from doing TV with him. I I know what I know what he's like as a as a human. He's a good man, and he wants success for the city. Yeah, success for this team. And he believe me, I don't think there's any part of him that minds where the team's at right now in the mind of everybody. Yeah. He looks at it as a challenge. Yeah, right. 
and he he'll, he's going to grind it out of him. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I, he'll I grind so it too. out of him. There's no doubt about it, and I can't wait to watch it. I know. I feel the same way. We're excited. Yeah, we're excited for sure. So, well, Jonesy. Appreciate your time, man. Yeah, Anytime, man. Awesome. Good to catch really up with do. you guys. You could probably stretch us out another hour. I'm sure. <laughs> I mean, yeah, you keep you, talking you, to you forever. <laughs> you you got keep, stuff keep getting to do, stories we, out we, of you. We really uh, do appreciate yeah, you, man. We'll totally. Keep it up, boys. You're it's the a lot man. of fun catching up with you guys, yeah. too. Thank you. You too.